Let's return to our top line conversation. A new survey finds Canadians don't have enough money to cover their monthly bills and debt payments. To weigh in on this, let's now bring in our feature guest, Diana Avigdor, Head of Trading and Portfolio Manager at Barometer Capital Management. Diana, good to have you in and get your perspective on Thanks this. Thanks for having me again. It's, um, you know, it's a topic that we always talk about here on BNM, particularly when we get new surveys, but it's even perhaps more important now with the potential of the Bank of Canada raising interest rates this uh, this Wednesday. How are you viewing the, the current levels of debt to income and news that uh, people really only have a $200 buffer? So here's the setup. First of all, what you're saying is is important to watch. Well, certainly, um, um, I, I saw it's uh, Canadians have a dollar sixty-eight in credit market debt. We we talked that it's perhaps even higher than that for every dollar of disposable income. Um, reports out there are highlighting the fact that we are not top debt in the world. We're something like seventh or eighth um, in the world. So um, uh, trying to temper that as 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 making it sound a little better. But it is certainly high. Um, but however, do you, do you believe in even, setup, but, but Diana, do you even believe in tempering it? In tempering it? Yeah. Um, I do think that. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Why? Why? Why does that matter? I um, mean, if you're matters. at 170 uh, percent income to to debt, why or debt to income, I should say, um, why does it matter for 12th in the world, 20th in the world, first in the world? Um, because um, you need to balance it out with can you afford it. Can the country continue? Is there something going forward that maybe will, um, you know, uh, when we look at valuations, we, we may look at where the valuation of something trades today, but you look at where the valuation is a forward PE, because you want to know whether what's happening in the future, uh, what's today is already priced in, uh, maybe it's even in the past. But that's not what I'm saying mm -hmm. with a household income. I am saying, though, that given the economic situation, um, you have uh, unemployment rate where it is, uh, you have uh, GDP growth where it is. You have a global reflation trade mm -hmm. coming off a very low level after the global financial crisis. The numbers always seem kind of big when you come off a very low level. So keeping an eye on things from a balanced perspective, um, so you have commodity uh, prices are doing better. That's good for the economy. Um, we'll, we'll talk about NAFTA a little bit later, perhaps, as mm -hmm. uh, how much risk it is or not. Uh, but um, part, as part of the global reflation uh, trade, with a Canadian dollar strong where it is, um, anecdotally, um, bank management teams are very positive on their businesses. Uh, loan growth is expected uh, to continue to grow. Um, and so Canadians so far are affording this. Mm -hmm. um, um, so it's important to look at the full picture, yeah. the full macro picture in terms of where the employment is and so forth and well, where, where the global economy tends to go because, you know, with, with how our economy is set up, um, mm -hmm. we are uh, affected by the global growth trade. Right. Uh, we, have, uh, we have exports that are contingent upon um, what the global situation is. That provides employment. We have other sectors that have come up. Um, that are providing further employment and growth. We have a technology uh, hub that's growing in Canada that also provides uh, growth. And frankly, that diversifies the Canadian economy. And frankly, it diversifies the Canadian indices as well, or the stock market, because we've had some conversation as to whether yeah. the stock market reflects the economy or not. And so there are pockets of growth here that, honestly, you can't put exact numbers on. And so, yes, it's high. We keep an eye on it. I would never say that this is not high or that this is not important because the moment the employment situation uh, tempers, the moment the employment situation is not so good mm -hmm. or wages don't go up or there is some sign of deflation or yeah. slow, slowing growth, this becomes that much more important. Right. I mean, there's no wiggle room, essentially. There is little wiggle but, And room. you're hearing that, though. That That's, you know, when you take a look at a survey and, you know, I, I asked the gentleman who conducted the survey where a $200 buffer fits versus historical. And um, unfortunately, they've only been doing this for a couple of years. But it's probably in line um, to slightly lower than what we've seen in Canada as well as the United States in terms of, you know, just only having about 200 extra dollars if, in fact, something happens. Like, that's not a lot of money. Uh, I know, but wasn't it $200 extra buffer, uh, two out of five? Yeah, it's not everybody. Right, so right. we can go to three out of five. Yeah, no, it's, it's there, not. There's a, some. I know. I but, mean, with the numbers, with numbers, it's never. But 
Well, right. You, exactly. can, you can slice you can, and you dice slice and, and you can make yeah. numbers look however you want to make them look. That Absolutely. But I guess what I'm saying is if you sit back and just kind of look at what's going on, if people are feeling squeezed and will feel more squeezed, uh, because there's been no wage growth, really. So if you're already kind of at, at the edge a little bit and then you've got an increasing interest rate environment and you talk about a reflation trade going on around the world globally, Canada is probably not going to sit back and do nothing forever uh, if that's going on. So, you know, the consumer has really helped the Canadian economy over the past couple of years since the price of crude oil crashed. Um, I would just have a concern that one of those pillars of our economy will not be nearly as strong. And um, you, don't, you're not, you don't have that concern. If that was the case, if that was the case, not that there's no concern, and certainly we always want to look at the macro situation, but if that was the case, um, we we would be going into a ne negative growth environment. That would mean recession. Um, I don't think we're there, um, given where we stand right now, given the employment number. And I think wage growth um, may still come, given where we come. In the U.S., we already started seeing uh, yeah. some kind of wage, wage growth. I don't think we're at the cusp of a recession, or at least it doesn't look like it mm -hmm. right now, given the data. What, what's your and definition so, of cusp? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's you need today. to see the cusp okay. before you know the cusp. Yeah, <laughs> we know. A year out. A lot of people are saying a year out. Uh, you, yeah, you know I that. don't know. We, you know, we, you know, we manage money for the for what we see now okay. and what the situation is now. We don't um, we don't trade for what we think or hope will happen. We want to see we want to see the situation. And you know that we don't try to pick bottoms or tops. And yeah. so the cusp will be seen when the cusp will All be seen. All right. Uh, let me just, before we go to break, address NAFTA, because that is certainly one of the uncertainties that could cause some damage to the Canadian economy, whether it's long-term, medium-term. Uh, definitely, I think we could see a knee-jerk reaction. Yeah. How do you play that? Yeah. Uh, so I do think that we're going to um, see a knee-jerk reaction. Um, I think that uh, uh, this is one of the issues that the Canadian market, um, in its ascent, We'll have to we'll have to see how well it handles it. Um, NAFTA has been dragging on for a long time, and it looks like it will continue. Um, Canadian market is not pricing in anything. It's not pricing in any kind of weakness. Um, the mm. the equity market has rallied. Commodity markets have rallied. Uh, currency has rallied. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't seem and and, and markets are a, a forward-looking pricing mechanism. Um, of course, they do sometimes get it right. But any kind of uh, outlier situation that we've seen in the last three years has surprised most most of us. If you think of how uh, markets reacted on Brexit, for example, how surprising was that? That, that the exact opposite of what you would have thought markets would do. So um, NAFTA is important to the Americans as well. And um, we did have a, a survey today that's talking about, uh, an, and this is never going to be a uh, White House official stance, but that, you know, President Trump does recognize uh, the impact this will have on the American economy as well. Detroit, for example, Michigan, Detroit is very dependent on some of these jobs. Um, so it's not lost on him. Um, I think that, uh, or so it seems, uh -huh. that it's important to them as well. Uh, the auto trade certainly uh, will affect us, yeah. um, but I think that we muddle through. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to take a short break. You're going to yep. stay with us in terms of um, the outlook and, and maybe muddling through NAFTA. We'll find out <laughs> where you're going to be investing in that scenario. We'll be right back.